Today's episode is on superstition, so wish us luck. Oh goodness. Every culture has its own unique urban legends. If you're in North America, you've likely heard that 13 is unlucky. If you step on a crack, you'll break your mother's back. And that caffeine stunts growth, which is just ridiculous. Bean drinks coffee all the time and look at how big he's gotten. Superstitions like these are why in Peru it's believed fridges can cause cancer. In Russia, celebrating your birthday too early causes bad luck. And in South Korea, sleeping in a sealed room with your fan comes at the cost of your life. By which I mean the machine, not the other kind. We'll, we'll talk about those more later. <clears throat> but what exactly does this myth involve? And could there be more to it than meets the eye? Well, prepare to sit back and cool off while we dig into this chill topic. Hey bro, did you call? Huh? Oh no, you're you're good, you melatonin blessed man, you. Also, how'd you get in here? Today's episode is exploring a widespread belief from a certain culture. I'm not here to judge anyone's culture, just to explore the health effects of using electric fans and the evidence behind popular beliefs. Every culture has its own superstitions, and there's no shame in that. If you have any health concerns about your fan or air conditioner unit, you can always check the labels on the box or talk to your doctor. And with that out of the way, let's get into it. Fans, we know them, we love them. They keep us nice and cool in the warmer months that turn sunshine and rainbows into a nightmarish lightning-filled inferno. Or, so I hear. Is it possible that they cool us down too much though? That's one of the beliefs behind the myth, that in a sealed room, the use of an electric fan will cause the body temperature to lower, resulting in hypothermia. Or that's the uh, claim, at least. The reports go that the air circulation in a sealed room, along with a sleeping person and often a round of drinking the night before, can cause fatally low temperatures. Others claim that the fan can cause a vortex of air and suffocate you. A buildup of carbon dioxide caused by other the fan's motor, the fan actively converting oxygen to carbon dioxide, and other seemingly less popular reasonings. Hmm, something seems off here. And it's not my coffee. Like with many superstitions, the exact cause is up for debate, though hypothermia seems to be the most commonly cited cause. I know what you're thinking. Is that even possible? Well, no, probably not. But there are those who claim it is. In an interview with Korea's Junang Daily, Dr. Yeon dong Su, the dean of Gwangdong University's medical school, refuted explanations like carbon dioxide buildup and suffocation, but claimed that the hypothermia concerns were well warranted. Hypothermia does not only occur in the winter when it is cold. The symptoms can also take place if a person has been drinking and turns on a fan in a closed room. Most people wake up when they feel cold, but if you are drunk, you will not wake up, even if your body temperature drops below 35 degrees Celsius, at which point you can die from hypothermia. This story is so widespread that warning labels and automatic shutoff timers are common on electric fans in South Korea. The Korea Consumer Protection Board and Korea Consumer Agency have even reportedly warned that electric fans can cause hypothermia and suffocation. That's not to say that everyone in the medical community agrees, of course. Gord Geisbrecht, hey, it's Professor Popsicle again. A physical education professor from the University of Manitoba said that for hypothermia to be a concern, someone's body temperature would have to drop by 10 degrees overnight, more than what a fan can do. Geisbrecht added, we've got people lying in snowbanks overnight here in Winnipeg, and they survive. Which isn't really news. People from Winnipeg are basically thermoses on legs. According to Dr. Lee Yoon Song, a professor at Seoul's National University's medical school, the most likely culprit is pre-existing conditions like heart problems or alcoholism, and that media misrepresentation is the reason why the myth is so widespread. You really think someone would do that? Just go on the internet and tell lies? Chun Rim, a professor at the Department of Nuclear and Quantum Engineering at the Korea Advanced Institute of Science and Technology, whew, that was a mouthful, even took things a step further and tested the myth himself. Studying his 11-year-old daughter overnight in a sealed room with a fan, he kept track of her temperature and vitals every five minutes. And it may not come as much of a surprise, but both he and his daughter survived the night. But where did this myth come from? 
Well, some claim that it originated in the 1970s, pushed by the government during an energy crisis so people would use less power at night. This explanation makes sense, since according to a McLean's article released in 2015, South Korea was importing 96% of their energy. However, by taking a closer look, it seems the myth dates all the way back to an article published in 1927 in the Jungo Ilba, or Domestic and International Daily. At that time, it was claimed that the use of a fan came with a risk of nausea, facial paralysis, and even suffocation. But that was over 90 years ago. Why does this myth persist? It may be our old friend correlation and causation. South Korean summers are hot and humid, and it wouldn't be surprising that many people who lose their lives to various complications might have fans running. That, combined with the already existing superstitions, would leave an easy culprit to blame, and an easy cause to avoid. So, that's it. While there are some medical sources that support the idea that fans can have negative consequences, I've looked into it and it's actually... Wait. Actually? Oh. Well then, this case just got a lot more interesting. While the specific myth of fan death may be isolated to South Korea, warnings about the negative health impacts of using electric fans have spread far and wide, especially in the summer. These claims have even gained attention from the World Health Organization, the Ontario government in Canada, the National Health Service in the UK, and the Environmental Protection Agency and Center for Disease Control in the US. Yeah. Right? During a string of heat waves during the 1980s and 1990s, the EPA and CDC released warnings about fan use in enclosed rooms. According to the warnings, while fans may provide relief at temperatures below 95 degrees, at higher temperatures the direct airflow from fans can evaporate sweat and cause increased dehydration. This is an evaporation opportunity, as Dr. Lawrence Larry Coxstein of the University of Miami calls it. Dr. Coxstein served as a climatologist who helped write the EPA's guidelines and posits that moisture from the body evaporates a lot faster and, therefore, unless you replenish it quickly enough, it can create a heat problem for you. Coxstein also serves as one of the reasons why the belief that fans are harmful remains prevalent in Korea. When asked by journalists if he believed in the myth, Coxstein had a lost in translation moment and responded to the unfamiliar term with, yes, fans can create a problem. But while Coxstein may not believe that fans can cause loss of life directly, even his comments on dehydration have recently been called into question. In 2015, a study conducted by researchers at the University of Ottawa and the University of Sydney found that electric fans prevented heat-related elevations in both heart rate and core temperature among their study of eight participants, and that advice to the public to stop using fans during heat waves may need reevaluation. More recently, on August 5, 2019, Dr. Ollie Jay from the Faculty of Health Sciences at the University of Sydney, one of the same co-authors of the previous joint Ottawa-Sydney study, released a study finding that even above recommended heat levels, electric fans still lowered core temperatures. It should be noted, though, that the same study found that in very hot, dry conditions, fans did cause detrimental effects. And it's important to point out that both of these studies were carried out on small samples of young, healthy people, and that Dr. J himself pointed out that larger studies were required. So, are there any other health concerns from fans? Hey, hey, yeah, I got this. <clears throat> yes, actually, but only for specific people. According to some sources, the use of fans could trigger irritation from people prone to allergies and asthma as dust and pollen in the air circulate around the room. And while it's certainly not death-inducing, that's still nothing to sneeze at. Which is all before we get into indirect effects. Here's the thing about air conditioners. They use a lot of power. Imagine if this candy was an air conditioner, and this bowl is the power grid. Now, while it can hold a handful of candies, it can't take all of the, uh, um, and, and, oh, these coffee beans are the appliances, and these are, and, and this, um, and, oh, you know, that's not going to be good. Oh, oh, and the popcorn is, I'll be honest, this one got away from me a bit. When temperatures rise, air conditioner and fan use increases. When more people use air conditioners, they add strain to the power grid. According to Direct Energy, the heat also means that transmission lines have a lower capacity and the increased strain can lead to them drooping and eventually short-circuiting. When enough lines short-circuit, there aren't enough lines to provide everyone with power, resulting in a blackout. 
As recently as July 2019, power companies in and around the New York City area asked residents to be mindful of their electricity use before a heat wave. With Con Edison spokesman Alan Drury saying, the demand for power can increase as the heat wave goes on because people become less resistant, more willing to turn their air conditioning on and up. But there are also ways to limit electricity use in the summer and not use as much electricity. Among the suggestions provided to New York residents were keeping blinds drawn when facing the sun, running appliances in the early morning or late evening, and using fans which use one-tenth the electricity of an air conditioner. Which is a relief, since staying cool lets me stay where I'm happiest. Inside. So, can fans harm you? Well, it certainly seems unlikely. Not unless you happen to have allergies that are being irritated by the pollen and dust in the air. Or possibly if you're using one in the scorching dry heat. But in that case, just be sure to keep yourself well hydrated. Drink water, try taking a cool shower, and make sure to keep the blinds closed when the sun is out. And if you have any concerns, it never hurts to talk to a doctor about what they'd recommend to beat the heat. So, until next time, stay chill. Bruh, really? No, I didn't forget. I realize now that when I asked about people sending me some fan art, I neglected a secondary definition of the word, so, you know, that's on me. But at the same time, Bean and I are very impressed with how good this is, and I want to thank you all for your support. I don't know when this is going to come out, or if it's going to make our 200k milestone, but regardless of whether it does or not, I just want to say from all of us, thank you. Thanks for sticking around. Oh, this is all too familiar. Look at that. This is... I mean, I'm not saying no. Oh, we've got a running theme with the... Um, with the combing hair situation. Um, it's all messy. It's like a hint. Oh, oh, that's me. I thought that was Bean at first. <laughs> oh, oh, that's so cool. True. I respect the lined paper. Yeah. Oh. Ooh, oh, very like nice. Yeah, I add a bean. And a bean, right? Yeah. Oh, oh, it's a logo. Classic logo. Oh, it's great. Talented. Look at that yeah. handsome boy. Oh, hey, that's <laughs> me. Oh, oh the squad. Bruce smiling, that's obviously fake. Grill. <laughs> 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 Not canon. Bruce is burning. It's just grill Everyone loves grill. They're such talented fans. Yeah, it looks like a Yeah, that's really good. And they call it a duo. Nice. Oh, I love that. I love it. I love that one. You know, purple's my favorite color. Oh, oh, where's Joe? Oh, hey, where am I? Oh, look at Ruthie. Hey! Thank you all so much. Thank you. Yeah. You're all talented. Yeah. Never change. Yeah. Uh, who are you people? <laughs>